It's the presentation slideshow app. Yes, yeah, slideshow presentation app. I tested a few times. It worked. Don't worry, everything will be okay. Look, I'm on. Oh, oh. Hi there! Welcome to Trailer Reaction Videos. I'm Matthew B. Lamont. And today, we're going to look at the trailer to Mecha Builders. But first, a little history. Lights, please. This is Joan Gans Cooney. In 1966, she created this organization called the Children's Television Workshop, which was designed to make television to be used as a teaching tool. After three years of research and some help from outside sources and talent, she created Sesame Street. This show teaches children as young as two preschool basics, reading, writing, arithmetic, reasoning, and the world around us. This urban-themed show consists of Muppet skits, non-Muppet skits, animated skits, filmed skits that used to be shot on 16mm film, and musical skits. In 1971, the Children's Television Workshop created a show called The Electric Company, where using the same techniques and same style as Sesame Street, except it teaches children about reading. And in 1980, she made one about science called 3 to 1 Contact. In 1987, she made another one that had the same techniques, except it was for mathematics. It was called Square One Television. In 1988, there was Encyclopedia, which was in co-production with HBO. However, during that time, there was mass merchandising. Apart from a magazine which premiered in 1970, there was a theme park in Philadelphia in 1980, and a movie in 1985 called Sesame Street Presents Fall That Bird. During its merchandising, there was the infamous Tickle Me Elmo craze, which caused a lot of riots in Black Friday of 1996, leading Elmo to have his own segment in like half of the show or a quarter of the show just before it's over, and his own movie. Adventures of Elmo and Grouchland. And now they have this new show called Mecha Builders. Lights on. Now that this presentation has been out the way, let's take a look at Mecha Builders. Okay, they just take, they just took one of three of Sesame Street's well-known characters to our contemporary, while one is classic, and you know, i.e. Cookie Monster, and they have to turn them into giant robots, turn them into robots, just to cater to audiences who not only watch Sesame Street, but watch all these CGI preschool shows on Nick Jr. or D uh, Disney Jr. I'm talking to you, 2018 reboot of Muppet Babies, and The Hub, back before it became back before before it was Discovery Kids and Family. And let me tell you, they just didn't do it for the heart; they did it for the money. I wonder what happened behind the scenes. Joan Gans Cooney, who's the head of Children's Television Workshop now, Sesame Workshop, she was like, I want to make a TV show that's catered towards little kids. Got any ideas? We got everything in a book. What do kids like? I'm asking you, you're all geniuses. Think, what is popular? No, uh, reality TV? Family movies these days where it's all CGI and special effects? Giant robots? Yes! Giant robots! Good! Anything else? CGI cartoons? CGI cartoons? Keep going. But we need to apply our skills. After all, we want to 
uh, educate children. That was one of our two goals since 1969. Educate children, make them laugh and learn, and rival cartoons. Uh, thanks? So, a bunch of robots that can change size and solve problems. I like it. Any comments? Ooh, me, me. Yes, you back there. Well, I was thinking that, uh, gee, the, having these robots solve common problems, at least it's better. But wasn't there another cartoon that was pretty bad that aired on Cartoon Network nearly 10 years ago about a robot, a human, and some sort of monster? They all solve problems. Aren't we copying that in some way? I mean, I don't see it working, but uh, I also predict there'll be a lot of merchandising, but uh, you're just doing this for the money, but not for the heart. Let's not forget that Tickle Me Elmo riots of 1996 and... Well, that's enough out of him. Any questions? Good. Let's move on. So yeah, that's what's happening behind the scenes, I guess. Although some parts were a bit of an exaggeration. So, it's come to my attention that I think they did this for the money. Not since Porky Pig rapping in Space Jam A New Legacy. This is just another way for kids to buy their products. After, I don't know, after the failure of the film that was called Sesame Street Presents Fall That Bird, I mean, Joan Ganscuni decided to make the show wackier since the late 80s. And from that point on, it got wackier and wackier because it tried to rival all these new wacky shows that were coming on back then. <sighs> If cartoons and children's shows get wackier, then Sesame Street will get wackier as well. I mean, I noticed about it since the late 80s, and, and this was like, hey, there's something wrong with this show. Not my Sesame Street. Even throughout the 90s, I still figured out there's nothing wrong here, which is why I avoided it like the plague since the 90s. And now you understand why this was done for the money. Mr. Rogers' Red Neighborhood, they just made it for the heart, not for the money. Reading Rainbow was just nothing but a public service announcement to get children into reading books and buying books. So part of it was a commercial to buy books. But since the 80s, around the time when cartoons were based on toy lines, there were nothing but half-hour commercials for children to buy toys, Sesame Street became a one-hour commercial to buy their products, apart from teaching numbers and letters. I mean, since I was a kid, I looked at this detail in the back of the book that says that said that children should not can't watch the TV show to learn. They have to learn through books and other merchandising too, because of some scientific uh, report of, about how much TV is too much TV. I wouldn't want to get into details about that. And the thing about it was in some of the old Sesame Street books from like the late 70s and early 80s, if you look at the very end of the book, there's like this little ad that that was an advertisement for, for children to watch their show. I had a picture of a count and it said, count your blessings, watch Sesame Street at your local PBS station. Or a picture of Oscar and it says, don't be a grouch. Watch Sesame Street at your local PBS station. Or a picture of Big Bird. Be a bird watcher. Watch Sesame Street at your local PBS station. Or a picture of Cookie Monster. And it reads, Don't be a monster. Watch Sesame Street at your local PBS station. I mean, you just watch a show. You got attracted by its products. And now you want to watch its show more? Ah, <sighs> this doesn't make any sense. I think this is just another mindless commercial just to get kids into buying their products. 
Well, do you agree or disagree? Comment down below. This is Matthew Bielmont saying, I got a phone call. Have a nice day. Yes. Hello? Uh huh. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, just calm down. Hey, I look, take it easy. What was this all about? Look, I know, it's just a presentation, and uh. No, you see here, you don't give me no lip about that. I don't want to put up with any of that stuff. Trailer Reaction Videos has been brought to you today by the letters M, B, and the number 12. Trailer Action Videos has been a production of Matthew Beetlemont Productions. Goodbye! This is WMBL Channel 9 somewhere. What? Can't I do a parody? <laughs>